Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris. This is the Iris Simulations PC21 for Microsoft Flight Sim. This is a pre-release first look at this amazing little aircraft and I'll direct you to their social media feeds if you want the latest information. I do not know the release date or the price of this just yet, but it is still in active beta development of which I'm helping out. Uh, and I have got five years as a turboprop captain myself, but not in the PC21. But throughout this video, I'm going to do some top tips and we're going to be covering lots of things like starting it up. We're going to be uh, going low level. We're going to do some aerobatics. We're going to look at the rear cockpit. We're going to look at the night lighting. And we're going to bring it back for a run and a break at this beautiful little airfield on the east coast of Australia, YSHL. First of all, we'll have a look outside the aircraft and you can tell already it looks fantastic, but I can uh, tell you they are still working on the bump maps uh, just to make it look even better. There are lots of liveries. I'm not going to go into what is available. This one is the Royal Australian Air Force 2 FTS livery, but there's lots of good stuff going to be released with it. And I'm sure the uh, community is going to get involved with doing more. Externally, you can see there's lots of flags, tags, chocks, and also the GPU at the back, which is also very nice. Lots of blanks and stuff. We like stuff, uh, but it looks gorgeous. Absolutely stunning little airplane to look at. Under wing, you've got, uh, I believe, their external fuel tanks. And if you select ESG, uh, then you can have the smoke pods. Yes, this aircraft also has smoke. So let's have a quick look at that now. So if we go to the weights and balance, we will remove the fuel. And you can see that actually most things, uh, the tags come back, but the underwing stores have disappeared. So that's how you get rid of them should you want to. So here we are in the cockpit of the PC-21, and it's a very tidy cockpit indeed. Perhaps even a little bit too clean. I'd like to see some wear and tear, but in general, the textures are very nice and the layout is lovely. I'll give you a quick tour of the cockpit before you get through the startup so you can see what to expect. And down to the lower left, we have lights, we have oxygen, we have the PCL or the throttle. We have flaps inboard of that. We have the engine start panel and we have the um, fuel transfer fuel pump panel and the trim gauge and undercarriage. On the right hand side, we have uh, ECS, the con um, environmental control system, comms. We have an FMS for people that enjoy that sort of thing external lighting, de-icing, and electricals, as well as the caution warning panel ahead of that. Clearly we have the three MFDs. Below that we have the stick, which you can disappear, and you've got a basic autopilot functionality. Below that we have a USCP and a head-up display, and we've got the ADI standby indicator and engine instrumentation on the right-hand side. So all in all, very nice cockpit indeed. Let's jump into the rear. In fact, we'll start at the engine first before we jump into the rear cockpit. First things first, over the rail, I'd normally check that the parking brake was on. The chocks are in, so I don't necessarily need that, but the parking brake is on. The PCR can stay in the, let's toggle it, so we click spot there to go to idle, so I'm going to leave it there for the startup. We can run through the entire checklist and make sure the switches are in the right place, but as default, cold and dark, they're generally in the correct place. I'm going to switch the auction on now before I forget, and we're going to switch the batteries and the generators on. So... Battery one, battery two, generator one, generator two. You can see that you get uh, the right hand page illuminated and we'll go through some of the functionality of that right now. So here we go. So hydraulics, that page works, electrical, fuel, uh, ECS is in op at the moment and the engine page. If you toggle this switch forward to MC and HUD, you then switch on the UFCP, the head up display and the three MFDs on the left hand side. The ops page appears to be in op, but the INST, which I think is instructor page, will give you the, in, the um, bits and pieces that you see here. So GPU, we can connect. So let's plug that in. ESG, which is the uh, smoke pods, I believe, on the outside. There you go. They look slightly different to the um, underwing fuel tanks. MP override, you know what? I can't even remember what that means. Please put in the comments if you know. And the uh, HUD is cyclable between PC21 and F18. So if you want to practice F18 style approaches, you can do. The avionics switch we can put to the rear cockpit. Now there is a trade-off here because if you had both cockpits operating at the same time, it's going to eat up some FPS. So if you want to go into the rear cockpit, you'll need to toggle that to rear. Now it does switch everything off in the front, but we can zoom to the back and you can see that everything is working. Now I think my shadows are set quite low, so apologies for the flickering. But the rear cockpit is also very nicely represented with a fewer, uh, fewer switches than what you'd expect in the front seat, which is standard. And also you've got a repeater for the head-up display. Turn the brightness up. And there she is. So you can fly this thing from the rear cockpit and it's very nice indeed. That is it, let's jump back to the front. 
Back in the front, I think it's about time to start this aircraft up. Now, I will note that the, uh, the seat pins are in the live position. This doesn't have a safe arming lever. So pin removed equals seat arm. So that is a work in progress. Don't worry about that. Uh, what you do need to do, if you're going to cycle between the front and rear cockpit, you do need to change the avionics. Dunk, like that. And now we'll go into the engine page. Down to the lower right, we'll put our red anti-coals on so they know we're going to start. Like I said, all the switches are in the correct place, but we know they're in auto for the fuel transfer, auto for the starter and ignition. And for the start, all you need to do is press the auto start button. But what we'll do first is shut the canopy. Shut the canopy on the right-hand side, operate latch to release canopy, click on that. Down she comes, beautiful. Uh, and make sure you click on the lever to lock it in place. You will get a canopy caution if you don't do that. Whilst I also remember, I will make the anti-skid switch. In fact, anti-skid is on, so I would imagine once we've got the engine started, that will disappear. So lights are on, canopy shut. Uh, it's time to start up. Checking we're all clear. And to start this up, we just need to click once to lift the cover of the auto start and click again for the startup. Listen to that noise. Lovely stuff. Whilst we're waiting for that to finish, I'll just add a few things on the UFCP. So the Takan, the nearest one, is probably triple one. So channel on the lower right, one, one, one and enter that's my tacan entered on this central screen i can go to uh, nav and that goes vor vor2 and tacan triple one and i'll set the course let's get rid of this stick for a minute i'll set the course to 333 which is the runway orientation i'll use that later for my aerobatics you can also do bearing point to one bearing point to two you can cycle that through to tacan uh, fms loads of different stuff in fact what we'll do is we'll leave that to fms and then on the left-hand side, you can see the waypoints. If I cycle up on the waypoint, you see it says waypoint one, two, three, etc. Now I set that up on a basic little nav map type flight plan, so we can follow it through a little bit as we go low level. On the left-hand side, we'll set that pointer to the TACAN. So we're gonna to point to the TACAN, we've got a pointer to our low level entry point, and we've got the TACAN lined up for the runway. Also remember, I'll also do the uh, altimeter to make sure that's set, and that's the TACAN. Uh, transponder will set that quickly to uh, code 4577, enter, uh, and that's pretty much all I need for now, it's all I'm going to use, but you can see there's ILS, there's uh, modes, fuel, lots of different stuff, it looks mostly functional, which is nice, uh, air to air, air to ground, not, mark, not, mission, uh, yes, that looks like it's synced into the waypoint, yes it is, so you can actually have the waypoint with your distance and bearing, which is nice. I like that. Put that back to com. So the engine has started up. The F pump, by the way, is to do with the throttle position. If it's off, the fuel pumps will be off. If it's idle, the fuel pumps will be on. So that will stay on. Uh, I'll put the probes on now. Why not? Uh, the probes are on. Lights, put the recognition lights on for now. We'll put the FMS on. Uh, we will tell you what, let's position initialize. We'll put copy that into there. And that's all we're going to do. So all I've done is copied with a UR4 and then put a UR5 button so that just copies in set IRS position to our current location. That's all I'm going to do with that. What else do I need? Let's switch the smoke on because we'll use that later. That's down to the lower right. And all of those are good to go. All of these are good to go. Just need the flaps to the mid position. Flap indication is on the right hand side. You can see the flap gauge here and the speed brake indicator is also there as well. And there's the speed brake on the lower side. Now whilst I'm out here, I remember we've still got the GPU connected. So if we're gonna disconnect that GPU, disconnect on this uh, INST page, and then back to Eng. That is good, clear all around, got the flaps. Let's get going. <laughs> Don't forget the speed brake. Okay, go enter, backtrack, line up on wait on runway 34, clear to the right, clear to the left. 
Let's talk off about the takeoff run. We're going to apply a bit of power, just make sure the engine responds normally. We'll apply full power, brakes release, and we'll rotate the aircraft at 90 knots. And then once we're climbing away, gear and flap up, and then we'll look to accelerate to 180 knots and continue to climb. Uh, what we'll do on departure, though, is we'll go pretty much straight to low level, just round over to that direction where the, the hills are, because it's absolutely gorgeous around here. If you haven't flown here in the sim, I definitely recommend it. Uh, so for the takeoff, flaps are mid lights we need some lights there we go some of that some of that lights are all on squawking transponder mode charlie is set and pito already switched it on okay here we go the power, good engines, and off we go. Engines look good, speed is alive, there's 50 knots, there's 80 knots, 90, rotate, climbing, gear, flap. About 8 degrees nose up for the acceleration, gear and flap indicate up. And then you accelerate to 180 knots, and then you can lift the nose up to about 14 degrees and you'll hold 180 knots for the climb. Right, time for some low level, let's go do some of that. So at low level this thing is incredibly stable, really nice little trainer. I've flown the TB30 by Azure Poly, which is a single engine piston uh, type version. It's still tandem, tandem seating but it's got a lot less power. Still enjoyable, but you'll only get about 180 knots out of it. This aircraft has a VNE, and I think, of about 370 knots. And I recommend either cruising at 240 ground speed. Oh, uh, in fact, have we got ground speed set? Let's have a look. Ground speed, so you can set the speed. Here we go. Speed, ground speed, and TAS by pressing on the central MFD where it says speed. Let's go like that. There we go, so either 240, which is four miles a minute, or 300 which is 5 miles a minute and you can do the old school map and stopwatch if you wish. At about 60 or 70 torque will hold your speed and then the rest is just looking out and having some fun. I mean look how pretty it is around here, that's lovely. Let's have a look from the outside. Well, I think you've seen enough of lower level. I could do that forever. Just cruise around, enjoy the view. It looks lovely. Of course, we do have the navigation. What's it on waypoint three? It does auto sequence through your flight plan if you've got one entered. And you see the extra information in terms of ETA, time to go, which is all nice stuff. 5.5, waypoint nine. Uh, waypoint nine is YSHL, so that'll tell me how to get back home, which is in the 12 o'clock. Next, we're going to exit a level, we'll climb up, we'll do some nighttime flying, or some at least some uh, dawn or dusk flying, just to show you what the night lighting is like. Nice, here we go. The handling on this aircraft is really nice too, really tight. Okay, let's set some lighting. So we've got some weather. Let's put the sun down. Or oh, something like that, that looks nice. Down to the lower left, of course, you have the flood lighting, you have panel lighting. There it is, you've got the display lighting. And there you go, the lights. I'm not gonna turn it all the way down tonight because it looks so damn nice. In fact, I tell you what, let's change the sun to the other side. Woof, look at that. That looks really, really nice. But whilst we're here, let's also turn the lights off so you get an idea of what it looks like at night. Now 
and the floodlight's off. Ah, that's my finger torch. And there you go, that is nighttime flying in the PC-21. Let's turn the uh, sun back on a little bit, because that was just really nice. Where's the sun? Beautiful. Well, need I say any more? <laughs> Lovely stuff. Right, next is time for some aerobatics. Let's put the lights back on. Ta-da! Cool, for the recovery, altimeter set, fuel is fine, instruments are fine, radios are not talking to anyone. What we will do is check that the smoke switches on and we'll also check outside to make sure this book works so here we go nice you'll notice the smokes are kind of puffy rather than consistent trail and that's again just not to hit the fps so much it's not so noticeable when you're flying around but if you're taking a static shot from the uh, from the side of course you will notice the puffy smoke but overall it's still good fun Okay, aerobatics in this aircraft, like I said, max speed 370. I'm going to do most of mine from about 240 knots, using about 70 to 80% torque, unless I need to accelerate, in which case, full power. Uh, we'll do some basic aerodynamic, uh, basic aerobatics. Nothing too crazy, because they're still working on the flight dynamics, although I will tell you that the flight dynamics are pretty decent, even at this stage. The first thing we're going to do is a loop. Smoke on. And up we go. Slightly inaccurate because I'm flying from the outside, but that looks nice. Let's do a reverse wing over. If you haven't seen my aerobatics video in the M346 or indeed the Hawk solo, I'll put links for those in the description below. But look at that smoke trail, that looks lovely. Now we come for the barrel roll. Da 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 da. So, top left of the HUD is AOA. If you get to 10, you'll start getting slight uh, judder for the buffet. Below that, you get the G. That wasn't my best barrel roll, but that'll do. Um, so, and I think that uh, the the five point one is your maximum G pulls. Let's test that. Uh, oh no, can't quite get to five point one. Here we go. There's the Cuban eight. I know you're like flying from outside occasionally, especially when you're flying on the Xbox. It is nice to see the aircraft whilst you're doing it. So let's try a stall turn. Smoke's going to go off. Uh, still working on the rudder dynamics. If you're really good, you can just about get it to work. Left rudder, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? We're hanging. Got some hang time. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Nice, that worked a treat. Uh, but like I say, they're going to make the rudder a little bit easy to work with. But it's all possible in this aeroplane. I think that's enough in terms of aerobatics. Uh, I'll probably do another video with this on aerobatics because it is so much fun to throw around. But for now, let's position back to runway 33 for a visual run in and break. Okay, here we go. So looking up to the left, clear. 
Roll, pull, idle, air brake. Looking out, about a thousand feet is what we're aiming for. Keep the speed brake out until we get to about 140 knots. Yes, I'm a little bit high. I'm not aiming for perfection here. <laughs> Just aiming to be effective. Okay, speed 140. That'll do. We'll go gear flap. Beautiful. Okay, 120 knots. Power right back. 120 knots round the final turn is what I'm using. Quite steep. I've got idle selected. I've got down flap selected. Gear is down three greens. There is a two and a half degree glide path on the HUD, which is useful. I'm going to pop the speed brake out a little bit, otherwise I'm just not going to slow down. 110, 100 knots. There we go. Down at 100 knots. Oh, little squirrely because I landed a bit fast. And that concludes this sortie. I hope that was useful for you. If you're still watching, please like and subscribe. Help support the channel. But I hope you enjoyed that video and until the next time, take care.